Yo, yo, yo. I like that, hey, the yo, yo, yo. And chuk, chuk. All right, hey, um, excited to be here. Third time at ETH Denver, uh, so probably an OG by now. I'm excited to talk about crypto data. So the title of this talk is The Revolution Will Not Be Reported Quarterly. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit about why crypto data is so different from anything we've ever seen before and how exciting that is and how many opportunities it brings. So, first let's think about how data used to work uh, before crypto. So, basically all kinds of data previously has been a B2B type of thing. Um, it's been locked within a business or within a team and it's all very sil siloed, closed. Um, there's never been really much many data sets that actually have like broad accessibility. Anything in tech is usually closed um, and it's inherently very limited in its accessibility. Um, and I love corporate stock photos, so you're gonna see a few of those. Um, basically also, all data previously has been pay for access. Um, if it's not produced inside of an organization and you want access to it, you need to pay. All data providers are paywalled. Um, so you have this dynamic where everything is inherently very limited. Um, and just think about the fact that like, if you have a login wall, that severely limits um, who can access your thing or like, who bothers signing up. And if you think about it even further, um, actually you have to pay to get something that even further limits um, who will access your thing. So when you have this, or everything is payable dynamic, um, it inherently becomes a very closed and limited um, environment. Furthermore, um, essentially for, for like the broader uh, access, um, only training data is real time. So unless you actually build a product and have the stats for that product, um, the only thing you can look at uh, that is basically live is uh, trading data. And if you think about how is value created in the world, um, it's essentially not by trading data. Trading data is kind of a metadata around what's happening in the world um, and in the world of finance. But at the end of the day, what really matters for what's driving value in the world is sort of actual usage and actual businesses and, and how they, they're doing. And today, all of that goes into essentially a quarterly PDF. There's a PDF file that companies put out once a quarter um, and essentially that's where you see the real interesting stuff. That's where you see how many people are actually using this. What's the revenue and cost of this business? Those are the things that really matters for understanding if something is valuable. Um, the trading part gets a lot of attention because it's so re real time, but it's not actually first and foremost what drives value. What drives value is understanding the usage, the traction of any given product or business. And so th this is how the, the current world works. That's how data works. It's very limited. Um, things go into PDF files once a quarter. Um, and beyond that, um, there's not that much going on. Now, let's look at crypto, because this is very, very different. So, first of all, crypto is essentially a shared public backend. A global computer that anyone can put code to. Um, and that in and of itself is of course extremely exciting and the reason why we're all building smart contracts and sort of believe in this space, you have this amazing thing where a computer is shared across the world and anyone can put code to it and interact with it. But that also means that this computer creates data which is extremely open and accessible. Um, and I think this is still very underutilized. Anyone, absolutely anyone, can go in and analyze what's going on on that computer. Um, and since it's open, since it's composable, that, that means like there's a lot of stuff to, to unearth and to dissect and to figure out. So it's all a real-time, flexible and collaborative environment uh, where you don't have to be pay for access, you don't have to work at a specific company, you can just show up, you can see what other people are doing, um, it's real time, 
which is absurdly interesting relative to like getting a PDF file once a quarter. Um, and it's totally flexible. You can slice and dice this data any way you want. So just take this example, like this is a quarterly report from one of the world's biggest banks, JP Morgan. Um, and as you can see, I've highlighted a couple of numbers here. And you get things like active mobile customers up 10%. Like that, that's, not, that's not super granular or useful. Um, and, and this is how this is done. It's highly uh, like abstracted away arbitrary metrics that some person at that company decides to, to display. Um, and that's what you get. Um, and that's how the whole system works. And it's still PDF files. That's, that's how the thing works. Um, and now contrast that to, for instance, a system like MakerDAO that has a Dune dashboard um, that shows real time their financials. You can see real time the revenues and cost and expenses of MakerDAO, the bank. Um, and this is all feeding live directly from the blockchain. Um, so this is such a massive contrast to what you had in a PDF. You can actually see, anyone in the world can access this, go to a Dune dashboard and look at this. Um, you can see the balance sheet. What asset does the maker bank hold? Um, what, what's the percentage of this? Like basically you can look into the risks and liquidity, all these things of a system like this in real time. Um, and I think it's kind of ironic when some sort of uh, people that don't understand crypto criticize it for being like obscure and uh, risky and, and non-transparent, all of this. It is so much radically more transparent than anything we've ever seen before. Like anyone in the world literally can, with an internet connection, can look at these stats. Um, and I think, not even that, essentially I think, basically in crypto, anyone has actually more granular and better understanding of these systems than probably the CEOs of the biggest banks have in their own systems, internally, even those even though those stats are not publicly accessible, folks like this guy probably understands less about his own bank than what you can as an anon on the internet looking into crypto financial systems. So this is hugely exciting. And obviously there's like, since this is open and composable and flexible, there are so many ways to look into all this data. So. Take one example as the decentralized exchange trading sector on Ethereum. Here, here's the dashboard that I built where you can see um, the trading volumes of all the products in that category and you can stack it up against each other. And you can see the market shares here, like Uniswap had as much as 80% um, share of trading volume. I think this is the last week. Um, and this is also like extremely useful for Investors like understanding how these products stack up against each other um, And I think this is still very underutilized like as a space um, People still look at like relatively let's call it vanity metrics But if you actually want to understand which products are going to prevail in the long term This is the stuff you want to look into if you want to invest into a decentralized exchange You probably want to understand if they're winning out in the marketplace in their sector and how hard is this to get? Not really hard. Like this chart right here that I made is five lines of SQL. And all of that is public um, on Dude's website. Anyone can go click fork, change it, make their own version of it. Um, so you have this insane flexibility uh, around all of this. So you can slice and dice it any way you want. Um, since it's a database with all this data, it is not highly abstracted away um, like in other sort of typical data systems. So, or things that you can as a public person have access to. Um, so, so this is like ridiculously easy um, and can show you so, so much of what's actually going on in these products. Um, and I think furthermore, this is important for building as well. If you think about the properties of um, crypto, one of the beautiful things is that it's all composable. You can plug into other smart contracts, utilize what's already been, been built. But you can also see 
what's actually working. You can look at the data and see these folks built this product in that way, um, and that worked out like this. This is the traction they're getting on that product. And it's, of course, hyper-competitive, but it's also, I think, extremely exciting for, for crypto as an ecosystem because it allows sort of the evolutionary forces to move way, way faster, where you previously could only sort of semi-guess or see what's working for other players. Now you can see it real time, their own internal statistics, essentially, from the back end that is the blockchain. So another interesting thing is, so, so this is uh, from Benedict Evans' newsletter um, a couple of months ago, uh, one of the best tech analysts in the world. And he commented on OpenSea's recent raise at $13 billion valuation, and he wondered, it would be amazing to see that fundraising deck. Well, essentially, it's a Dune dashboard. Um, and Richard, I don't know if he's here right now, but he's, he's in the, on the conference, um, has built this amazing OpenSea dashboard that shows the revenues and traction of OpenSea. And you can see, for instance, that their monthly volume went from, I think, about $8 million in January 2021 to almost $5 billion in January 2022. So they did a 625x year over year in terms of their actual product traction in volumes. And you can even see how that translates into revenue for them via fees. And you can see that they did almost $400 million in revenue in January. So there's really no need to wonder um, why, sort of how, the, what the deck, deck looks like, fundraising deck looks like for a, a crypto project because you can just look at the actual stats. Um, and and <laughs> this is actually happening. So Element Finance um, raised a $32 million dollar Series A simply off a Dune dashboard with product metrics and traction metrics. Um, so, and another, Interesting thing about this is that the public can make the same assessments as a professional VC or investor uh, because you can actually see the same statistics uh, as they look at when assessing these things. And when the token is publicly traded, you can actually you know, get, get the same information access and get access to the same assets. Um, another obviously like big thing recently has been LuxRare and OpenSea. And again, back to this sort of building very, in a very competitive environment. Um, and you can here, for instance, see their trading volumes against each other. Um, you can see that, yes, looks rare volume was higher. It's been falling a lot. Uh, you can see here that while OpenSea has about 60,000 users um, a week, I think it is, uh, daily, 60,000 users daily, um, looks rare has only 1,000. Um, and there's also like Hildobby, great Dune user, he's been looking into like the wash trading volume as well. There's a lot of things happening here. And anyone can like look into this and see the merits of these products and their approaches um, real time. So basically on Dune for instance, there's over 100,000 pieces of analysis. We have 10,000 people analyzing this data. It's growing every day. And if you want to understand what's happening on chain, you have all that wealth of knowledge accessible to you. And you can fork it, you can remix it, you can make your own version. Um, so there's this insane amount of knowledge about these systems that's gathered in dashboards and it's happening in real time and it's all building on top of each other instead of building in silos next to each other or in closed environments. So basically to sum it up, traditionally in financial data, Everything was B2B, everything was in, within organizations. Basically all um, data products were pay for access and if you actually wanted to understand something about the traction, the, the business and how it's faring, you got it in a quarterly PDF file. In crypto, on the other hand, things are community first, it's open, it's composable, it's shareable, people are building together and on top of each other. Um, it's free for anyone to access, and you have real-time insights into what is happening, which is a total, total game changer. And that was all I had, so thank you very much. Check. So we have time for a question or two. Any, any questions about, I mean, this is absolutely awesome, incredible. Any questions, raise your hand. There's got to be questions. I mean, and, and, you know, there's, there we go. Uh, 
Um, I guess, how do you see Dune's position as like a data source for crypto compared to other platforms like the graph? Um, so obviously we've been very focused on, on like the analytics part and sort of building tangible dashboards. Um, I think the graph is more of a developer oriented uh, product that sort of sits a bit lower level uh, in the stack. Um, but I think in general, like all, all everybody building in the space are kind of moving fast and, and they're still like, not, it's not clear exactly how everything will end up. Um, but I think we, we definitely have a bit of a different, different angle currently. Do you have an incoming API, maybe? What? Do you have an incoming API? Yes. With streaming? What? Streaming API also? Yeah, I, I, I can't reveal too many details, but uh, we, we have announced that we will build an API and, and uh, we will do it as fast as we can, yeah. And have you, have you considered um, help, uh, how do you say? Have you, have you considered um, Letting people access June data from, like, say, smart contracts as an oracle somehow. Yeah, so so we're definitely thinking about like various ways to to expose the data and give access to more granularity and like all the things happening in the systems. It's certainly not trivial. Um, so we're still a pretty small team and and uh, sort of just getting the the data in that we already have like in a performant and convenient sort of conveniently accessible way is, is a hard problem, um, but we want to add on more sort of functionality over time, essentially, yeah. One more question, anyone? All right. Uh, thank you for Dune, uh, Avid user. Uh, what are like kind of the current roadmap plans to increase the scalability so that more wizards can uh, uh, make queries and make the queries can run faster for large analytic loads? Yeah, so, so we're working on a new data platform um, to, so basically, as I mentioned, we came here the first time like three years ago. We, we've been sort of hustling on this thing for, for quite some time and, and uh, we have a data system that's currently stretched to its ab absolute limits. Um, so we actually recently, just this week I think, announced uh, our Solana integration and that's on a new data platform. So very soon we're gonna see insane performance increase on, on all the data sets on Dune and we're gonna add a lot more data sets um, we're also going to enable cross-chain queries, so you can like traverse all the different layers um, in one single query, which is going to be very exciting. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll do it. There we go. Um, what are your plans to grow the Dune community and to increase the amount of users uh, using Dune? Yeah, so, so we want to invest way, way more in um, education and sort of getting people into to sort of become Dune wizards. Um, frankly, to this date, it's been very crude. Like all, all our documenta documentation and, and the ways that in which you can get going, you need to like be pretty self-learning um, or like figure things out yourself. Um, so we definitely want to invest way, way more in, in bringing more sort of analysts into the space. And I think one thing that is really exciting is that learning SQL is, is not that hard and you don't have to be a developer to actually do it. Like I'm, I'm a patient zero myself, like literally my co-founder Mats, he's an engineer, I, I'm not. And the early days of Dune, like he built a database and I just learned SQL on top of that and forking his queries. And we've seen so many people do this. Um, so a lot of non-technical folks actually learn SQL with them for Dune um, and end up getting a role, um, get paid and, and getting a job in the space. And I think that's extremely exciting that we can have sort of the same dynamic that GitHub had for developers. We're like, if your GitHub profile is great, you don't need a CV, you can just get hired off of that. And basically that is happening with, with Dune creators as well, where people just have a Dune profile, have created some great dashboards and they get hired and get a job in the space. Um, so we definitely want to scale that way further and enable sort of a new generation of people to actually add value to communities, get into the space, and not necessarily having to be developers to do that. Frederick, that was awesome. How about a round of applause for Frederick? Who, who else is excited for that API? Uh